Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Veterans Weekend, and we want to give honor to the veterans. Now, there's some folks that, uh, that are privileged to be around veterans, that know some veterans that have been in their family, that we even have some veterans from, or some ser current serving military people from the church that are involved in the military, and we want to honor those as well. It's, it's important that we give honor where honor is due, and it's a sacrifice to take your time and go and be involved in the military. So what an honor it is to, for people to be able to do that, but what an honor for us to be able to acknowledge that unto God. So let's take a moment. I know we've already prayed, but I want to pray again specifically for those that are in current military duty. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for those that operate currently in military duty, and we pray, Lord God, for safety and protection and guidance and wisdom and all that they're involved in. And I pray, Lord God, that you would give them the insight and the ability to know exactly how they're to respond to every single situation. That the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God be formed in them. I pray, Lord God, that you would penetrate their very life with the fullness of God. And I give you praise for that, Father. Now, Lord, I pray you bless this service. I pray that you bless each one of us. Open our eyes and our ears and our heart to be able to receive the fullness of the Word of God. Father, use me, my mind, my will, my emotion, every part, that it be all of you and that it be none of me. I submit myself to you for the working of the Spirit in this service, this day, right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Open your Bibles this morning to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glad you're here today. Amen. Amen. John chapter 14. Look at verse 21. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Now this is a really broad statement by Jesus to say that he who holds on to the word of God and keeps them, you're proving to God you love him. You're proving to Jesus you love him. Then he goes on and says, it's he that loves me and he will be loved by my father and I will love him. And here's the neat part, I will manifest myself unto him. Now this manifestation of Jesus is something we're praying for. The fullness of the revealing of Jesus when we're in a situation, when we're in a trouble, in a difficulty. How many know you need an on-target, on on-site ability of Jesus to show up right now? You need the Lord present. This is the fullness of the power of God, present to heal, present to change your situation, present to bring in finances. He's there present according to the Word, and we need that. We need a manifestation of Jesus in our home, in our job, in our church, in our relationships, we need the manifestation of Jesus. We need the fullness of the ability for Jesus to show up. Amen. Now this is what he promised. By the preaching of the word, by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But here's something cool. He also does this, this showing up. He has the ability to show up through other people. Because sometimes I'll be just preaching along and some little child to do some catch my full attention it happened this morning catch my full attention it's like they just but it's like I hear the voice of the Lord talking through someone even a child the Bible says that God can even use the child to speak the word of the Lord and there's something powerful about that somebody may say a word sometimes and it's the voice of the Lord speaking to you now be ready to receive that today look at John chapter 1 just back up a little bit to John chapter 1 and get to verse 16. I want to start this day by you seeing this scripture. John chapter 1 verse 16. And of his fullness we have received grace for grace. Everybody say that. Grace for grace. Say it again. Grace for grace. He says I'm pouring out more grace. I'm giving you grace. You're going to have grace. Now what is grace? Come on now, we've talked about this for a couple of weeks. What is grace? Unmerited favor of God. 
Now, that's the beginning of grace. You've got to understand, grace comes in three parts. We're going to get to that in a minute. But you've got to understand, the starting of grace is the unmerited favor of God. Don't you need more favor sometimes? Yeah. I mean, when, if you're in a situation, wouldn't it be nice to walk in there and say, I'm, I'm really glad that God's pouring out His favor here because this is going to change the situation on my behalf in Jesus' name. There's some of you that have dealt with certain people on the phone, and you're talking to them, and it's like, what's wrong with these people? How come it's so difficult? Why are they having trouble even catching on? What is going on here? But if you'll stop and say, Lord, I'm going to need some grace for grace here. You've got to pour out some grace. Let me have some grace here. The favor of God can change the situation. Amen. Now look at John. You're standing right there in 116. Look at 117. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and, tr grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. If ever you see a gift from God, something is a gift from God, it comes from God to you through Christ, it's called grace. Now when he sent Jesus to us, and it came from God as a gift for us, he sent Jesus, which is all grace. You've got to see this. He sent us this. He sent us this gift, and He sent us this grace. That's why we have received grace. He's given us full grace. Out of the abundance, He's given us grace. Full grace, and we are to minister grace. We're supposed to speak grace so that people that hear us, they're receiving favor by our words. Anybody ever heard somebody speak words and they weren't very favorable? They were speaking words, you're like, boy, that's not very graceful right there. The Lord said you're supposed to speak it so that the person that hears you, they have grace to the hearer. There's supposed to be favor in your words. If you ever catch yourself getting a little bit upset, getting a little bit mad, you better capture those thoughts and bring them into obedience with Christ because otherwise it's going to go in your heart and slip out your mouth. And the very person you get angry with, you ready for this? The ones that you get upset with are usually the ones you know the best. And the reason is because you feel most comfortable in letting them have it. And you don't have much to give anyway, but you shouldn't be giving them something that's not grace. Are you with me? The Bible says give them grace. So, he says this, that we're supposed to have this grace given to us through Jesus Christ. He saved us by grace. He healed us by grace. He's given us provision and prosperity by grace. By grace. Look at 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 30. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30. The Bible says, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became unto us wisdom of God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. He's been made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. The reason is, it is a gift from God to us through Jesus Christ. He's been made unto us wisdom. If you're carrying the Spirit of God with you, and that's the fullness of Jesus, that's His Holy Spirit in you, then you also have the wisdom of God. You have the righteousness of God. You've been made redeemed. He's promised this by His Word. The righteousness of God, this victory of God, comes through the grace of God. And you know, when you receive a gift, when you receive a gift, people ought to say, thank you. I think that this is why you're supposed to turn to the Lord often and just go, thank you, Lord. There's sometimes we praise, and I'll just be singing some songs to the Lord. I just get lost in, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because it's so meaningful to me that I'm so appreciative of the gift. You know, when someone gets a gift from you, and you've gone out of your way to put the thing together, You've gone out of your way to make it good. Now, some of you know what it's like to put a gift together and it takes hours. You finally get that gift together and you give it to the person. They go, oh, well, isn't that interesting? How's that make you feel? Come on. It's not so good. Especially if you put the time into it. This is what Jesus feels like, I'm sure, sometimes because God gave us this gift. He planned it from the beginning. And we're supposed to stop and say, Whoa, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I think we need to spend more time saying thank you. And this is really a portion of the thanks. Identify grace every time you see it. Now, we've talked about this before, but if the grace of God is happening to you in any area, you see favor of God, you ought to see that's the grace of God right there. 
Because when you point it out, you can go, I want to thank you, Lord. That's the grace of God right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Many of us need to understand the grace of God in your life. Now listen to me. The grace of God is His will for your life. We sometimes say, well, I don't know if I'm, I can need all, I don't know if I'm going to need all that. You need some grace. You need some favor. You need the will of God. He promised to get this in your life. And we need to be ready for the fullness of the grace of God. Now, there are times I got an opportunity to go up north and be at Cambria. Anybody ever been? I mean, uh, 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 what's that? Uh, Carmel. Carmel. Anybody ever been up to Carmel? Oh, there's a lot of people. That's some nice, pretty area up there. Boy, I'll tell you what. And that Monterey and the, and the Carmel area, I got up to Monterey. I'm sitting there with my wife, and we're sitting on a little bench, and we're looking at the water. I'll tell you what, the Spirit of the Lord come upon me. I don't know what happened. It's like it overwhelmed me. And I was looking at the water. I was looking at the waves. I was looking at the trees. I was seeing some birds. And I was thinking, Lord, you made all this. And my emotions got moved. Now, the Bible says you are not to be moved by your emotions. But my emotions... Sometimes, you got to understand this, if they're moved, it's all right to get moved, you, but you just shouldn't follow that and go with it. But my emotions were moved as unto God. It was a goodness of God. I couldn't help myself. I just started tearing up, looking at the water, and looking at the waves, and looking at the trees, and looking at... And I said, Lord, you're so good to me. You let me see this. This is a good place, and I appreciate that. I think that we need to stop sometimes, no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through. And I talked to the Lord about this, and he says, you know, you don't spend enough time telling me thanks. When you're going through stuff, he said, in everything, in everything, in everything, give thanks. This is the will of God. And I said, uh, yeah, I know that. He said, when you're going through some stuff, at the time to really show me how much you love me and how much you know I'm going to come through. Because when you're dealing with something, you ought to be saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. You get me through this in Jesus' name. That's faith in operation. The words of faith, the power of faith, the language of faith is thank you. You've got to say thank you. It's the fullness of the power of God. Now when the goodness of God comes on you, and it came on me, the presence of God is there. There's a power of God and you're unable to deal with it. you got to sometimes just, just go with it. Sometimes I put myself in the place where I just went with that. And the presence of God, listen to me, the presence of God is the fullness of the grace of God. His grace is His presence. His presence is His grace. And you got to thank Him for the grace. Thank Him. I mean, a favor of God happened, you ought to say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you. And I'm preparing you all this to understand we're going somewhere. we got to thank Him for this. The grace of God will turn things around. If you're going through something, you're going to need some help. I need help every day. But it's the favor of God that gets you through. You've got to stop and say, Lord, I'm going to thank you for your grace. Now, there's faith involved in that, but the words of your mouth ought to be thank you for your grace. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your victory. Thank you that I can see the other side in Jesus' name. The manifested grace of God, the manifested power of God, the manifested glory of God is the fullness of His grace. Now, today we want to discuss... Three types of grace. Are you ready for that? Three types of grace. Now the first grace we already talked about, the first grace we say, well, that's unmerited favor. And sure, there's grace and more grace. He says, I'm going to give you grace upon grace. If you read that in the Greek, it says grace and more grace. Well, he's going to give you grace and more grace. So we say, well, thank you for the grace and thank you for more grace. We thank you for the grace, we thank you for more grace. Look with me in James chapter 4. James chapter 4 and verse 6. The Bible says in verse 6, and we've read this before, but don't miss it. Mark this in your Bible. God gives more 
grace. He gives more grace. If you're running short on grace, he gives more grace. He gives more grace. Now that's more unmerited favor of God. He pours out grace and more grace. He gives you more healing. He gives you more financial blessing. He gives you more triumph. He gives you more prosperity. He gives you more abundance. He promised this grace, more grace. He's going to pour out more grace. Could you deal with a little bit more wisdom? Anybody want a little bit more wisdom? I mean, want, want, want a bunch more wisdom. Come on. I, I need some wisdom. There's certain times I'm going through things and I think, well, I, I just don't exactly know which way I should go. And I'm praying about it. And sometimes it takes me a little while to figure out what I'm going to do and, and hear the voice of the Lord. But I need more wisdom all the time. More wisdom from God. What would your life be like full of more favor? And know that you have favor everywhere you go. You walk into the grocery store and they say, well, don't be concerned. We'll take care of it this time. You're like, all right. <laughs> Come on, that doesn't happen very often. But God said, I'm going to do this more and more now. More grace, more grace. I'm going to give you grace and more grace. I think more is a pretty powerful word. Anybody ever heard those commercials where they got the little kids sitting around they're doing some kind of a commercial and they say to the little kids, would you rather have more or less? And the kid says more. Because if you have less, you always want more. <laughs> and they say more. I think more is a word that little children learn. I can remember all my kids as they were growing up. They were like, one more daddy, one more, one more. As they got a little bit older, it was like before they go to bed, they said, wait a minute, wait a minute. One more drink, one more, <laughs> one more. <laughs> Come on, y'all remember that. And, and sometimes they'd be sitting there playing the last game, and before they go to bed, they go, wait a minute, wait a minute, one more, one more. I think more is something that all kids learn. But God trying to get us something, to understand something. He wants us to understand that we can have more grace. If He's trying to pour out more grace, more grace, more wisdom, more victory, He's trying to give us more, more, more. Now here's what you ought to understand. If the flu is going around, and you've heard on the news, well, it's going around. I've heard people say, well, it's coming around. If the flu is going around, and that's a worldly thing, he says, I'll give you something to combat the flu, more grace. Now, somebody said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need healing. There's healing in grace. There's healing in grace. It didn't come because you asked. It didn't come because you, you were so good. It came because he's so good. And the deal is not that you earned your healing. He gave you the healing. Amen. We need more healing. And you can get that through more grace. When the world says, well, you know how things are getting shortened right now. Hours are getting cut back and people are doing with less. And, and gas prices are going to go up. And why they might even raise the interest rates. Listen, what you need right now is some more grace. When there's an uncertainty going on, you need grace and more grace, more grace, more grace. You ought to be saying out of your mouth, no matter what you're dealing with, you ought to say, Lord, I'm going to thank you right now for more grace. I thank you for more grace. I thank you for grace and more grace, more grace. If you've got enough grace, you can do anything. You've got enough favor of God, you can go through anything. Praise God. We need more of this. This is what the Bible says. We need more grace. More grace. He said, I'm pouring out for you more grace. So get ready to receive that. So the way you start it, number one, you've got to recognize you have more grace. Number one, you've got to recognize you have more grace. God wants you to say that out of your mouth. When you're in need of something, don't just say, Lord, I need this. You ought to just pray, Lord, I need more grace. He said you could pray. You could ask for more grace. So ask for more grace. Speak to the situation to change. If you're filled up with the grace of God, you don't have to put up with it. Some of us put up with it and go, well, you know, I wish things would change. I wish it would be different. I like, I'd like it to be different, but you know, it is what it is. How many's put up with that in your mouth? Come on now. It's time to change this situation. When Jesus saw a situation that wasn't something he wanted... What did he say? Father, I thank you. First of all, it's come out of his mouth. I thank you because that's what grace does. That's the, that's the voice of faith. He says, I thank you that you've heard me. 
And I thank you that this situation has changed and, and that's exactly what he spoke. We need to speak it out of our mouth. If there's a car prices or gas prices going up, we can say, nope, nope, I'm saying that's going to be changed. Now just this weekend, this last week, my daughter had to go get some pictures taken. She had some engagement pictures taken and, and it was really a thrill to go do that. And the girls at work were saying, well, you know, it's going to rain that day. And she said, I'm going to declare it's not going to rain in Jesus' name. I'm saying that out of my mouth that I'm speaking to that thing to stop and be dried up and not be around us and be completely away from us in Jesus' name. And the girl said, well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You're going to have to come in and apologize to me because that's not going to happen. It's supposed to rain. It's going to rain everywhere. She said, it's not going to rain around here. It's not going to rain around here. I'll tell you what, they went to get the pictures. And the girl said, well, I'm going to show you what the, what the radar says. It's rain everywhere except here. <laughs> she, said, she said, you must have prayed, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> because you can ask for what you want, but you've got to speak it out of your mouth. The reason we're not getting what we're asking for is because we're not asking for it. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. If you're full of the grace of God, it's going to pour out your mouth. This is how Jesus operated. The fullness of the grace of God was in him. He is the grace of God. And so he just spoke the things out of his mouth that were equal to what God is expecting. He said, I only say what the Father says. If we're going to do the will of God, we've got to say what the Father says. If the Lord's trying to help you, instead of letting a situation get under your skin, anybody know what I'm talking about? If a situation seems overwhelming and it seems like it's too big, what do we usually say? Well, you know, I'm going through something right now. Pray for me. I, I really got a problem right now. We don't say what the Word says. We're supposed to call those things that be not as though they were. And instead of sharing our difficulties, we ought to share the Word. We ought to say, you know what the Lord says? He brings me out of every si single situation. He always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. He's, all, he's made me more than a conqueror. And so instead of saying the things that the world wants us to say, we ought to speak what the Word says. And it changes the situation into becoming what God promised by His will. Amen. And this is the part of the Lord that I want you to get. The Bible says in Romans 8, 2, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had freed me from the law of sin and death. The law of the Spirit of life. If you're filled up with the grace of God, you can't help but the law of the Spirit of life coming out of your mouth. Instead of what's talking about in this world, sin and death. Amen. And let it come out. Now, number two. Number two. You ready for that? We talked about more grace. More grace. But let me show you what it says in Romans 5 and verse 20. Romans 5 and verse 20. This is pretty good. Romans 5 and verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace much more abounded. Everybody say much more. Much more. The second level is much more grace. <laughs> Now, first of all, you got grace and more grace, but the second level is much more grace. Now, we're not just talking about more. We're talking about much more, much more, much more. Now, this is interesting. Where sin abounds, where sin abounds, and that word abounded is taken from the Greek word plia adoza, which means an existing in abundance place where sin abounds existing in abundance where sin abounds and the tense of the Greek also says it's growing larger and larger and expanding with every moment of time where sin is abounding and it's growing larger and larger and expanding with the moments of time he says where sin does abound he says but then grace abounds much more much more where this word much more is taken from the Greek word hooper Parisimo, parisimo. If you look at this, it says where sin does abound, grace 
is growing out of measure much more abounding, growing out of measure beyond proportion, out of the banks, and into the extreme. Now wait a minute. If we don't read that in the Greek, we miss something. Because when we say, well, we're just having much more, we're having much more rain, we're having much more lettuce. No, I think we're having much more grace. Are you with me? He says you're having much more grace. And if you see this, there's a covenant of God. He says, I want to bring, the, this is the second part, it's much more grace, and it's a covenant. He says, I'm making a covenant with you. It's not this, I'm going to handle things, but much more, I'm going to change the situation because I'm coming down on you like a flood. Where the devil tries to come out like a flood, like with great power, it says, the Bible says, he will come down like a flood. Well, think about this. When a river has a little water coming down into the streams, and a little bit more water coming down. Into, now this doesn't happen in California very much, but back in the Midwest it was, a, it was a thing all the time. Water would come down from every string and fill up the, the creek bank and fill it up and turn into a river. And pretty soon it keep coming and go up the river would rise and rise and flow out of the banks. And so much, much more, it would flood all the way as far as your eyes could see. This is the kind of grace that God says, I'm ready to change your situation with much more grace, a covenant grace that's going to pour out of the riverbanks just like you have no room to contain it. It's going to take care of the situation and wipe it clean. How many want that kind of grace? He says, this is the much more grace. It's a giant river that's being flooded by the waters of the stream and raging up through the banks, rising and rising and rising and pouring out of the banks and flooding everything. And this is much more grace. He said, I want to pour this out on you regardless of what you're facing, regardless of what your situation is. The much more grace is pouring out an abundance on you right now and it's going to surpass everything that you're dealing with. Much more grace will always surpass the situation every time. Amen. He promises the enemy cannot stop you if you're yielded to the Lord. Now here's what keeps people away. If they're not yielded to God... If they're not walking in his will, if they're not command, staying in his commandments, they say, well, I'm praying for the grace. Well, God says, I'm going to pour out grace. And the first step, much more grace, you've got to believe in his commandments. You've got to believe his word. And the second one, you've got to come into a renewed mind. You've got to constantly be changing, working on your mind for much more, much more, much more. Surrender to the power of the grace of God. And it will rise higher and higher in your life and flood everything out, completely changing it in God's favor. How many want that to happen? Amen. Your situation is not too big for God. Amen. Now there's a third way. Oh my goodness. We had more grace. We had grace, more grace. We had much more grace. Man, we had one and two, but now there's a third one. Can you believe there's more? We did one and two. He said grace, more grace, and then much more grace. Are you ready for the third one? Look with me. 1 Peter 5 and 10. 1 Peter 5 and 10. Now we got grace, more grace. We got much more grace. You ready for the third one? Okay. <laughs> Look at this. 1 Peter 5 and 10. But may the God of all... Wait a minute. May the God of all grace... Wait a minute. We got more grace... We got much grace, and folks, we got all grace. It's more than you can just imagine, grace or more grace. It's more than you can imagine, much more grace. It's all grace. He said, I'm going to pour out on you all grace. Some of you can remember from 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8, where it says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in everything might abound to every single good work. He says, I'm pouring out. We've read that scripture many times, but I'll tell you what God enlightened me and he said there's something on the third level called all grace. If you're ready for that, get yourself ready. How much grace is all grace? Now listen to me, listen to me. How much grace is all grace? You might say, well that's everything. That includes everything. There's what's not included in all grace? Nothing. It's all grace. It's every single bit of grace. Now, I just said this at the beginning of this particular talk. What contains all grace? 
What contains all grace? Jesus himself is all grace. He comes on the scene. He says he's able to make all grace Jesus himself show up and change the situation. How many need that? We're talking about this is a serious connotation here. If Jesus shows up in power, in the fullness of his anointing. Now somebody said, well, you're talking about Jesus Christ. Yes, and Christ is not his last name. Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. So Jesus shows up in the fullness of power, in the fullness of his presence, in the fullness of goodness, in the fullness of his anointing, and he changes the situation. Now some people say, well, he's sitting on the right hand of God. Absolutely. But the Bible says Jesus sent us his Holy Spirit. He sent us part of him. Now wait a minute. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God through Christ to us. It's grace. All grace. Jesus is all grace. God is all grace. The Holy Spirit, all grace. He said, I'm putting in you an anointing and it's all grace. If you'll call on the Holy Spirit, now we're talking about inside knowledge. We're talking about inside knowledge. You've got a Holy Ghost inside you and he knows all things. He says, I'm going to show you grace for grace. Some of you have not prayed in the Spirit long enough. Because that Bible says in Jude verse 20, He that prays in the Holy Ghost builds himself up in his most holy faith. Suddenly your language changes. Suddenly grace is poured out because it's impossible to please God without faith. And faith comes out of your mouth and you're praying in the Holy Ghost. And he says, more grace, more grace. I'll come and visit him. Oh, come on Holy Spirit, let's go on down there and take care of this situation. He's going through enough. that He's been dealing with that thing for a week now. Let's fix it. How many want to fix? We need a fix from the Lord, don't you imagine? And he says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm sending down my power, my presence, my anointing. I'm sending down the very essence of my being, the Holy Spirit himself. And level three is the power of the anointing of God. Here's how I'll put it. Let me put it this way. It's the manifested power of grace. It's the manifested power of grace. We've not really experienced the fullness or even talked about that too much, but the manifested power of grace is the fullness of the Holy Spirit working in your life. The manifested power of grace. Now let me take you back to John again as we close. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And look at the same verse that we started with. John chapter 14 verse 21. He who has my commandments, this is not a person that is not privy of the word. This is a person that looks at the word, that memorizes the word, that meditates in the word. You have the commandments of the Lord. How many of you have a Bible? Oh, this is a really elite group. You all have a Bible. Glory to God. You know, when I was in Jamaica, and I went there for a missionary journey, I took 21 students. Or actually, I took 18 students and three adults and went to Jamaica to have a graduation outing for a Christian school. And we did their graduation travels to Jamaica to minister. And the kids were surprised. I thought we'd be at the beach. No, we're going from place to place and minister the Word of God. And they said, this can't be. This can't be. But if you look at this, Look at this. He said, if you have the commandments of the Lord. We got there to Jamaica. And all these Bible students were sitting there. We were in a brush arbor. And now that's just a bunch of brushes on top of uh, sticks. They're all the people that were there, they just all, just all from the woods. And they just barely got a loincloth on. Some of them had little t-shirts on. It's like, oh, we got this. And the missionary stood up and said, here's what we want to do tonight. Is your group, 18 students from a graduation from a Bible school, from a school that believes in the Bible, against 
all of my students here, all these little students, little Jamaica students, and we're going to just quote the Bible tonight. That's we're just going to quote the Bible. So everybody, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Everybody stand up. And as soon as you quote one verse from the Bible, you can sit down. Just one verse. We'll go back and forth. They'll do a verse. You do a verse. They'll do a verse. Quote one verse from the Bible. You can sit down. Well, they got about 40 people over there. And we've only got 18. So we said, well, this is going to be easy. We're going to blow them out the water. So the first kid stood up. And he quoted John chapter 21 all the way through. And they came over to our group and the guy stood up and he says, uh, 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 he was so amazed by the boy talking, he said, well, I don't think we're going to stay there any longer. Back to this group. And they went to the second boy. Now the first boy sat down, they got the second boy and said, what do you say? He said, well, I'm going to quote the book of Matthew. So he stood up and quoted the entire book of Matthew, didn't miss a word. And he sat down. Now our team is intimidated. I mean, they're beside themselves. They're like, they're going to quote the whole Bible. We're going to have nothing to say. <laughs> and said, so how you do that? I asked the missionary, how you do that? He said, we only have one Bible. So we give them the pages. And they memorize the pages. And it's the power of God is working. And the village has been healed. And people get saved every day. Because they read their word. I'm going to encourage you. Read your word. It's the power of God to us. He wants to give us his word. His word. His word. In John 14 and 21 he says, He who has my commandments, not just to obtain them, but you have them. They're in your heart. You're reading them. And he keeps them. He knows them. Not only does he know them, but he does them. He's doing the will of God. It is he who loves me. You want to show God you love him? Get the commandments going. Keep them. Say them out of your mouth. Keep them. Say them again. Keep them. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself unto him. I'll show up in the fullness of power. I'll show up with the fullness of my presence. I'll show up with the fullness of favor and much more grace. And I'll give him the anointing to change his situation. Now all of a sudden that verse makes a whole lot of sense. It's like, wait a minute, he's showing up in the fullness of manifested power. He's going to show up the manifestation of grace himself. Going to show up and change the situation. Boy, we need that. How do we get it? You obey the commands, you keep the commands, you get the commands, you keep the commands. This will bring the manifested presence of God. It brings the anointing of God. It changes your situation. You want to know what to do? I'll tell you what to do. Get the word, memorize the word, and it will change your situation. Keep that word. It will change your situation. Now somebody said, well, I, I, I've been trying to do that. No more trying. No more trying. It's time to do it. You've been dealing with something long enough. You're dealing with your house payment long enough. How many want your house paid off? Come on. Whole thing paid off. Glory to God. Your car's paid off. Don't you want your car paid off? Come on. It's time to get that. If God's going to pour out His manifested power, it's more than the abundance. The Bible says you can't have more than abundance. He said, I'm pouring out all grace comes upon you that you having all sufficiency in everything abound every good work. How do you get all grace? Come on, come on. How do you get all grace? You hear the Word of God and you do the Word of God. You hold it in your heart. You change your mind. You do it in your heart. He says, I will manifest myself. That's the fullness of the presence of God. Wow. He said, this is what you can do. This will change your situation. Well, if you know what to do, what do you think we ought to do? Come on, what do you think we ought to do? Who said that? Miss Miller, you are a bright woman. You ought to do that. If you know what to do, come on. If you know what to do, do it. If you know what to do, don't, shouldn't you do it? Don't you tell the kids that? Don't you, didn't you raise all your children that way? You know what to do. You, you better do what I told you to do. Jesus is telling us, do what I told you to do. This is how you get the manifested presence of God. 
This is how every single thing will, will change in your life, the manifested presence of God. And for this, you ought to say, thank you. Thank you. In fact, let's stop right now. Let's do that. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are our God. And Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ. It's a gift because you strengthen me. Romans 8.37 says, no more in all these things. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loves me. I know that you love us, Father. This is the manifested power of grace. It's the gift from God to us through Christ. And we receive that. We refuse to be moved by what we see. We refuse to be moved by what we feel. We are moved by the Word of God. We know that you are the Christ. You are the living Christ. You are the anointed one. And we will stand on the Word. We're going to hang on to that thing no matter what. It will get us through. We're going to hang on to the Word and we shall see the glory of God. Father, I pray that each person here today yields themselves spiritually mentally, emotionally, physically, into the things of the Lord. Remind us, O oh God, how to put those scriptures in front of us. Remind us, O oh God, how to show us the Word and that the Word becomes powerful to us. Remind us, O oh God, how we should keep the Word in every area. Keep the commands of God. Keep the command. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, all thy mind. Love your neighbor as yourself that the grace of God comes out of our mouth even to those we love. I pray, Lord, the thing change now in every area in Jesus' name. Change in our work. Change in our home. Change in our church. Change. 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 The grace of God poured out. Now, if you want to be a candidate for more grace in your house, I want you to raise your hands high to the Lord. Raise your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every hand that's raised today, may the full favor of God, the grace of God, more grace of God, much more grace of God, all grace of God be poured into our home. And Father, remind us how to keep the Word in front of us. Remind us to keep that Word always and the fullness of the manifested power of God. Change our situation in Jesus' name. Change it for the better. We receive that. We receive that. We receive that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The manifested power of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.